Let me tell you something about this ghost. He's a bad news bear. Hey, what's up? I just needed to relate to you. Uh, <laughs> you wanted to relate to me, Tom? Yes, I wanted to spin a chair around backwards and sit with the backrest facing you. And I'm going to sit like this so I can relate to you and get on your level. Anyway, I wanted to relate an email that I got from a viewer. You see, this happened in Wisconsin. And this person went to an ATM to get $10 out. Well, thought he heard something behind him, and so he turned around. But all he saw was a pumpkin sitting in a window. And so he went back to the ATM, typed everything, and withdrew a bit of money. Well, the next morning, his account was cleaned out. <laughs> yes! That face that was in the window was a ghost. And it was watching him type in his PIN number. You see, this wasn't just any ghost. It was an entity called the Ridgeway Ghost. Ah! Ah! Sorry, a poltergeist just got me. The ghost at Ridgeway is a headless horseman that roams the haunted dirt roads of Wisconsin. Well, why would I be afraid of that, Tom? Because this ghost is a phantom. You know what that is? It means he appears suddenly out of nowhere and chases the living whom he hates. He chases them down like dirty animals. And then he disappears into thin air. He sometimes manifests as a horseman from hell, with whips and chains. He conjures up balls of fire and hurls them at people trying to escape. Other times he has a pack of hellhounds with him. It got so bad in the mid-1800s that traveling by night was simply out of the question, as it was too dangerous. It all began in the early days of mining, in a makeshift work camp known as Ridgeway, populated by immigrants of Cornish and Welsh descent. Over the early highway known as Ridge Road were driven creaking ox-drawn wagons, proceeding to Milwaukee from Mineral Point, Pokerville, Blue Mound, and other towns of the Lead region. Along the road, no fewer than a dozen saloons popped up, most of them with somewhat soiled and dented reputations. They outnumbered the other businesses and sprung up as indispensable adjuncts to the post offices, hotels, and groceries between Galena and Milwaukee. Ridgeway was a strategically located stopping off place for traveling miners, offering liquid sustenance the taverns were frequented by toughs and gamblers. On one fateful night in 1840, two young brothers were killed in a bar brawl. One of the boys got into a fight with a rowdy patron, who threw him into the fire, where he burned alive. The other boy ran away, only to freeze to death outside. It was from these deaths by ice and fire that arose the Ridgeway Phantom. For not long afterwards, the very same doctor who pronounced the boys dead saw the ghost sitting on the pole of his wagon as he rode by the home of the deceased brothers. It was in this environment, among people already steeped in old country superstitions, that the Ridgeway ghost went to work. He ranged the highway and surrounding farmland, 
playing mischievous and harmful pranks upon travelers and inhabitants alike. He was that most exasperating of phantoms, the practical joker, and one who shamelessly exploited his obvious advantage. Playing according to no rules whatsoever, and generally turned out to be a downright nuisance. Most of his tricks have no meaning at all, just to make locals' lives undesirable. He wanted to put them through the ringer. He would go into the pastures at night and milk the cows dry, so that the children wouldn't have any milk to drink. Oh. Then he would loosen the carriage wheel pins on people's vehicles, causing many bad accidents. Ah, it killed people. On one occasion, there was two railroad workers who were carrying a large plank, two men on both sides. And as they were walking through the brush thicket, the Ridgeway Phantom appeared. He pulled down the back of their pants and started lashing them with a switch. Well, the two men started running while carrying the plank, and he whipped them mercilessly the entire way. You see, this was an inside joke, as there was no formal courts or jails in the immigrant camps. Criminals were punished by public whippings. I wish I could tell you this was some sort of poetic justice, whereby the Phantom was exacting payback on someone who had whipped an innocent man. But the truth is, they were just two regular guys that didn't do anything wrong. Oh, that ghost. Why did he do it? They were the type of guys that would have gotten the whippings in real life, so it was almost like he was mocking them. There was another tale of a local man chased around his own farm by a pack of hell dogs. He ran to the barn, grabbed an axe, and began hacking the beasts in self-defense. When it was all over, the farmer opened his eyes and saw that he had slaughtered his own pigs. <laughs> Trick of the Phantom. Another story came from a young man who went to visit a friend in Milwaukee late one night. As he was walking back down the steps, he saw a wood-burning stove sitting on the sidewalk of the empty street, and thought nothing of it as he walked past. Then, the stove stood up on all fours, and began walking beside him. The young man walked faster, and then began running as fast as he could, all while hearing it gallop behind him. When he finally got some distance ahead, he turned to look, and the stove exploded! Boom! With such force that it lifted him in the air. The continuing antics of the Ridgeway Phantom took a much more serious turn. As reported in a Wisconsin newspaper dated December 7, 1902, in the obituary of one John Lewis, a prosperous farmer living in the vicinity of Ridgeway, a man of sober life and undaunted courage, who cut through the fields after helping a neighbor with some work, and while climbing a stone wall, his attention was arrested by sight of a figure that seemed to have gathered itself from the just now tenantless air, and stood confronting him with a menacing attitude. Lewis fled, but the ghost stepped across his path and raised its arm. Next morning, a neighbor found Lewis lying inside the wall in a semi-conscious condition. He said that he had been hurled in the air, as if in the vortex of a cyclone. Pounded, crushed into insensibility, he died a few hours later, after he was carried to his home, asserting with his dying breath that he had come to his end by a supernatural agency. News of this incident spread as far as New York City and books and news columns were even written about it. And also soon dismissed by critics who assured readers 
that the infamous Wraith of Wisconsin was something manufactured by local townspeople to rid the region of the disreputable element, which would then repeat these stories in their taverns. Yeah. Eventually, the Chicago and Northwest Railroad was built, and the hauling of lead and supplies over Ridge Road was discontinued. And so ended the saloons. The ghost also seems to have vacated the area. He haunted so well for so long. Yet the scares and superstitions remain. It was said that the famous night visitor left because he couldn't stand the whistles puffing, the railroad engines, and the rattling rails, the freight and passenger cars. The ghost was reported to have been seen seated on the cow catcher of an engine as it was leaving Ridgeway. Perhaps it was then that the mischievous sprite took his departure from the scene of his countless exploits. The yarns, however, never did stop. He has been seen by many persons over the last century, some of whom weren't even drunk. In 1910, the village of Ridgeway burned to the ground at the hands of an arsonist. Gee, I wonder who did it. Well, I was watching the local Wisconsin news, which I do from time to time. I check in. And they had a 10 o'clock news report about a party that some young people were having. And it was a costume party. Well, someone showed up there dressed like a ghost. And they were the life of the party. They danced around with the punch bowl. They even did the moonwalk. Well, and then they sang songs together, held hands, did a Django. Well, when the clock struck midnight, the guest said, I hate to disappear, but I turn into a pumpkin at midnight. Poof. Yep, it was the Ridgeway ghost. The spirit world strikes again. Alright. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time.